Welcome to S1. Today we're going to look at using our Casio 570-991EX with normal distribution. Okay, you do need the English language version. Um, I haven't checked other versions. There is an Arabic language version for those of you in the Middle East, but it doesn't have normal distribution. So you do need the English version. I don't know about other languages, but... Play it safe, go with the EX version, the English language one. We're going to first look at how to find the probability. So if we're given X, the mean and the standard deviation. We'll then look at the inverse. So when we know the standard deviation and mean, and then we know the probability or the area, and we want to work our way backwards to that value of X. And then at the end of this video is just a short little bit on the number format okay which i feel is quite important it's the format i use um so just stay tuned for that so without any further to do let's get into it so to do the normal distribution in your calculator you need the casio class with 570 or 991 ex okay the english version um, so to, to get into the menu, just go into menu and then we need to go across and down to distribution, which is number seven. Now we can hit equals here or we could have just clicked number seven from the beginning. When we're into this menu, you'll see that we've got three normals, normal PD, normal CD and inverse normal. Now, in this first part, we're just going to look at normal CD which is the cumulative distribution. Okay, and then later we'll look at the inverse normal. The normal PD we're gonna leave alone. So normal CD is number two. So all I need to do here is press number two. And we're gonna need an example. So let's do a very quick one. Setting up a random variable and probability of greater than no less than or equal to 26 okay so here you can see that my mean is 20 and my standard deviation is 4 and what we're going to do here is find less than or equal to 26 which means that 26 will be my larger value so I just want to scroll down 26 in and then press equals I then need to enter 4 and 20 for my standard deviation and my mean and once I've done that I can just hit equals and here we have it 0 0.9332 so 0 0.9332 to four decimal places which hopefully should be easy enough Okay, same as how the kind of tables work, except for in this, we haven't had to find our Z value first. We're able to just put it in and get that probability straight out. Next, let's look at another problem. So X is greater than 30. So first, just remember that X being greater than 30, is just the same as greater than or equal to 30. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go back to my menu bit, but not all the way back. So I can just start by hitting the AC button. That'll take me back a step. And now this time, my lower value is going to be 30. So enter that. Now, my upper value, we don't actually know an upper value. So I like to just enter a load of nines. Hit loads, nice big, big number, press equals. Standard deviation and variance haven't changed, so I don't have to do anything there. And here we've got my answer, but it is to in standard form, isn't it? Which is a little bit of a pain. So shift and ENG a couple of times, takes it to the power zero. So therefore I can then write my answer nicely to four decimal places. I will later on show you how you can avoid this standard form um, number format. 
Let's look at another one. So we go between two values this time. And this one's quite easy because it's just putting between the two values the 17 and 26 in this case. Hit equals and hey presto 0 0.7066 to four decimal places. And there we have it. Very, very easy. Now this time we're going to go in the opposite direction and we're going to use the values we already kind of know so in this case from the last one we worked this out this is rounded off but we'd expect 26 or approximately 26 here so in my calculator what i need to do is go back into the menu hit that seven again so i get my distribution options back up I want to go with number three, inverse normal. Now I want to put my area in, which is my probability. So 0.9332. I don't need to do anything with these, my standard deviation and my um, mean, as they haven't changed. So if I had, I could obviously just change them here, but I don't need to. Just hit equals. And there we have it, 26.00, which is my 26, um, to two significant figures. Next, let's look at the other problem we were looking at, which is x is greater than some value is equal to 0 0.0062. So to find this, I just need to go back into the previous menu. So to do that, just hit the AC and then change this area to 0 0.0062. My mean standard deviation is the same, so no problem there. Now you'll notice that this value is not 30, that's what we were expecting. It's actually 10, and that is because of our question. So let's think about it a little bit more logically. That's obviously our 20, that's our x. This is 0 0.0062. We actually want this red area here because the calculator works very much like um, our tables where it's less than or equal to. So we actually want to use this area. So 0.9938, hit my equals, and there we get it, our 30. X equals 30. Now it's worth pointing out at this point, you know, what kind of happened. You know, why did we get 10 originally? And just, you know, just to make sure you're completely aware and understand, as I was saying, the tables and the calculator gives you the area less than or equal to. So when we initially put in an area of, you know, the 0 0.0062, this is what the calculator used it as, x, which is why we got an answer of 10. Okay, so to be able to do our answer, which was clearly when x is, is greater than x, is this small value here, we need to understand where that would be within our diagram to make sure we use the right area. So hopefully that's been quite useful for you. Uh, very hopefully a quickish video, just showing you the basics. Um, personally, you know, you do need to understand using the normal. And this is really about checking your answers, double checking your answers during your exam to make sure you're right. You know, if you get the same answer as the calculator, then you can move on confident that you got that question correct. Now, just before I end the video, I did say about the decimal part, the number format. So I'm going to show you that now. So check this out in your calculator. Type in a decimal. This is what we've already used. So 0 0.0062. Oh, then one too many. It doesn't matter. But you get the point. It's in standard form. But we don't want it in standard form. So what I actually want to do is I want to go into the setup menu. So shift and menu to go into this setup. 
Okay, the yellow one. I want option three, number format. I want normal, which is also option three. And then I want two, but just the number two. Now let's try a point zero zero six two. Let's do it right this time. Press SD, and you can see now it says a decimal, not standard form. Let's quickly go back in and do the distribution again, just to show you. So we had the upper, the lower was thirty. The upper just hit a load of nines. Um, standard form, a uh, standard deviation was four. Mean twenty. Hit equals. And here we have it, decimals, you know, not standard form. So this kind of thing is really useful. It's it's a set that I have my calculator in all the time because standard form just irritates me when I'm doing um, calculations at A-level maths. I much prefer just to see it in decimals. So hopefully this video has helped you a little bit. Okay. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a little bit more. If you have any specific examples or something you're unsure about, again, just let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. If you found it useful, don't forget, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you soon.